OK, let's do a problem um, which we can't solve using energy, a rotational problem. Let's say you're a computer manufacturer and you are trying to develop something that will stop your hard drives from breaking when you accidentally knock your laptop off the desk. So what you've got to do is a spinning disk, radius R mass M, spinning at some high angular speed omega naught, and that's what a hard disk is like, and you want to apply a torque tau to it such that in a time t naught it will come to a halt. And you want that t naught to be short enough that before the laptop hits the ground or does anything too dangerous it's all halted and so your data is not lost and the disk isn't ripped to shreds. Many computers have systems like this. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We can't use energy. Uh, because we're interested in how long something takes. Energy never tells us that. Energy only ever tells us um, the net result, not how long something takes. So we're going to actually have to use, um, look at torque and the rate of change of angular velocity. So we know that torque gives you the rate of change of angular velocity. Which is the same as the second derivative of angle with respect to time. Okay, um, and there's a constant in here which is the moment of inertia. This is just the rotational analog of F equals ma. Torque is force, moment of inertia is mass, and this is the angular acceleration. Okay, so, uh, so that tells us that d omega by dt, the rate of change of the angular speed, is equal to tau divided by the moment of inertia. In this particular case, for a disk, the moment of inertia is just 1 half m r squared. You can work it out by integrating. You can integrate over rings around here, or you can look it up. So that's our equation. We're going to that tells us d omega by dt, but what we actually want is omega, so we're going to need to integrate this. So let's integrate um, d omega by dt from the starting time to the end time, rotating with respect to t, is equal to integral from naught t naught, tau and i are both constants, so you can go outside the integral, so it's just dt. So this integral over here is just omega, so we get omega from naught to t naught, just equal to tau over i, and that's just 1 times dt, integral of 1 is t, so we get t from naught to t naught. Now when time equals 0, so when t naught equals, um, that's the time when it stopped, at which point omega is 0, so that's 0 minus the starting angular velocity is equal to tau over i um, t naught minus 0. Okay, so rearrange this and we find that t naught equals minus omega naught i over tau. And we know that i is half mr squared, so that's minus omega naught mr squared over 2 tau. So that's how long it's going to take to stop. Is this plausible? And the first puzzle is it's negative. But that actually makes sense because the torque is in the opposite direction 
to the angular velocity, it's slowing it down. So if the angular velocity is going this way, the torque must be going that way. So in fact, tau will have a negative value. So in fact, the answer will come out positive. So that makes sense. Um, it tells us that the um, time taken will be longer if it was spinning faster to begin with, which makes sense. It tells us that the more torque we apply, the quicker it slows down, which makes sense. And if it's a heavier thing or a bigger disc, it takes longer to slow down. So that all makes sense. Plausible.